Recording now. <laughs> okay, you can go to the next slide now, Audrey. Okay, so I just wanted to go over a list of who should be involved in these discussions, as well as a few terms that you'll hear throughout the presentation. So number one, of course, is the Molokai community. Um, government and elected officials, along with state, other stakeholders, should also be closely involved in the planning process to help keep us up to date on current energy policy and ensure a smooth and speedy implementation of our plan. Most of these terms and acronyms are pretty self-explanatory, but just so there's no confusion, um, we refer to the Molokai Clean Energy Hui as the Hui or MCEH. The Ho'ahu Energy Cooperative Molokai also goes by Ho'ahu or the Co-op. Um, when you hear us use the term HNEI, that's short for Hawaii Natural Energy Institute, and they will be conducting the expert analysis of our grid and energy options that we're most interested in. Um, okay, so Miko, Hiko, and Helco are actually all under one name now, which is Hiko, uh, but many people still use the term Miko to refer to our one and only utility provider here on Molokai. And then um, the PUC is short for Public Utilities Commission, which is the regulatory body that oversees the utility, aka HECO or MIKO. And then here are a few more terms and acronyms. The energy landscape can feel pretty overwhelming at times, especially because there are so many acronyms and terms to learn. So here are a few that I think would be helpful to know for this meeting. Um, we, use, we use renewable energy and clean energy interchangeably. And we're talking about energy that doesn't come from burning fossil fuels. When you hear RFP, that stands for request for proposal. Basically, it's a business document, document put out by the utility. So in our case, HECO, that announces a project and the details in order to get bids from different developers who would like to build it. Um, let's see, community-based renewable energy is usually called CBRE for short, or will sometimes also be referred to as shared solar. So this type of program allows for people who are not able to put solar directly on their own rooftops to still benefit from renewable energy savings. So participants would pay a subscription fee to a larger scale solar facility that would in turn give them a credit on their electric bills. And then when you hear us say Palao RFP, that's referring to a large scale solar project proposed by HECO that um, is being proposed to be built at the Palau power plant site. And last but not least, we have the Molokai Community Energy Resilience Action Plan. And for short, we're calling it the Molokai CRAP. And on that note, I'll turn it over to Matt, who will give us a quick overview of Molokai's renewable energy history and realities and everything that's led up to the formation of MCEH and the Molokai CRAP. Awesome. Mahalo, Leilani. Um, before I really jump into my section, I just want to uh, thank Leilani for her amazing uh, leadership and all the work she's done to help facilitate this process. And for those of you who just joined us, um, just to mention again that Leilani gave birth like 12 hours ago. And here she is leading us in this first of our community meetings and, and just doing an amazing job. So thank you, Leilani. You're an inspiration to all of us. Um, and I also want to say, you know, I wanted to mahalo uh, Malia for the opening pule, for reminding us all what this is really all about. It can get super technical, super complicated, can get political, um, but I think what it always comes down to for all of us is that this is for our island. And um, the fact that Leilani is sitting there in MGH with her newborn baby reminds us as well that this is for our future generation. So, um, really when it comes down to it, that's, that's why we're all here, uh, trying, to, trying to create a better future. All right, so I'm gonna jump into my section now. Um, first, I'll introduce myself. I'm Matt Yamashita, community member, filmmaker by trade. Uh, many of the kupuna out there probably remember our grandpa Henry Yamashita who ran the Molokai electric power plant through the mid 1900s. Uh, my personal involvement with renewable energy began in 2010 when I started doing residential solar design and sales for Rising Sun Solar. I was also a member of the Molokai Clean Energy Initiative and am currently 
a board member at Sustainable Molokai as well as a member of the Molokai Clean Energy Hui. All right, so for my first slide, you know, to know where we're going, we need to know where we came from. Uh, we also have to have a, a really clear understanding of the reality of today's situation. So I'm gonna spend the next five minutes reviewing some history and context. So we'll start with the obvious. All of us use electricity. We need it for our daily lives to operate our businesses and to stay connected. Unfortunately, most of our electricity comes from oil that is transported thousands of miles to reach us. It is totally unsustainable and is a major contributor to climate change. It's dirty, it's, ex it's expensive, and it yields zero benefits back to our community. We, we all know that the cost of energy is constantly rising. And as long as we depend on imported oil for our fuel, it will continue to rise. Our grid, which includes the Miko power plant, turbines and distribution lines was not designed to accommodate renewable energy as a primary source of power. So there are lots of challenges that need to be addressed. In the meantime, the current grid leaves us all uh, vulnerable to outages and natural disasters. Next slide, please. Okay, so a little bit of history here. In the mid 2000s, there were a couple of proposals to build massive wind farms in West Molokai, and that was to send power to Oahu. Uh, there was major com uh, community opposition, and it taught us that not all renewable energy makes sense for our island. However, when Sustainable Molokai surveyed nearly 300 residents in 2012, there was overwhelming support for transitioning to community friendly renewable energy. Thanks to tax credits, falling technology prices, um, creative financing options, and the net energy metering program, rooftop solar exploded between 2010 to 2015. The savings for homeowners were so attractive that Molokai actually saw one of the highest per capita rates of installation of rooftop solar in the nation. Unfortunately, in 2015, the rooftop solar net metering program came to a screeching halt because the grid was overloaded. Around the same time and in response to the rising demand for renewable energy solutions, a group of community stakeholders formed the Molokai Clean Energy Initiative or the MCEI. For three years, the group worked with energy experts and policymakers to explore renewable energy options for Molokai. Then from 2016 to 2021, um, there were very limited options actually for families to transition to renewable energy. The goal during that time was for the utility to attract the developer to propose and install a large scale renewable energy project, but nothing panned out, um, meaning not much has really changed in the past six years. Next slide, please. Okay, so current efforts. Last year, umbrella by Sustainable Molokai, community members formed this group, the Molokai Clean Energy Hui, um, and, and this group was inspired by the work of the Molokai Clean Energy Initiative, which I mentioned in the last slide. Um, the goal of the Energy Hui is to encourage community engagement in renewable energy efforts and to help shape renewable energy plans and policy. As Leilani explained earlier, the Molokai Clean Energy Hui uh, is the group bringing you tonight's meeting. Uh, another renewable energy community group also formed last year and um, this is the Ho'ahu Energy Cooperative who is working towards providing community-owned renewable energy projects. And we'll learn more about them in a minute. Um, recently, both Ho'ahu and the Energy Hui teamed up to provide recommendations to improve the terms and process for two major MIKO RFPs, one for a CBRE project and one for a larger Palaau project. Okay, next slide, please. The path forward. So what's happening now is that both the Energy Hui and Ho'ahu will be working with HIKO and the PUC to strengthen the CBR, CBRE RFP and to reassess the larger Palau RFP. At the same time, the Energy Hui is launching a community-driven energy resilience action plan. The intent is to create a holistic roadmap for Molokai's renewable energy future. We'll explain that effort in detail in a, li a little later in this presentation, and we'll also explain how you can participate. Finally, our hope is that the results of the Molokai CRAP will ultimately inform 
future RFPs, guide grid improvements, and attract community-friendly renewable energy projects. Okay, so we just covered um, key background information and, and a lot of context. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Chris O'Brien. Hi, everybody. My name is Chris O'Brien. I have the distinct pleasure of being the only person I think who is a part of all three of the organizations that we're speaking about tonight. I work full-time at Sustainable Molokai as a director of finance and development. I'm also the treasurer for the Oahu Energy Cooperative Molokai, and I also serve on the, on the HUI itself. And so, oh, next slide, please. Next slide. Oh, thank you. So briefly, I wanted to go over where the funding for the Energy HUI and the Molokai Sea Wrap is coming from. So initially the HUI started last year with startup funding from Hawaiian Electric Industries Foundation. Uh, since then, uh, we have received matching fund source, both in dollars and in kind from Sustainable Molokai, our, um, from our own resources, as well as from Lupono Initiative. Uh, we are hoping to have Maui County also be a part of our funding for the plan. Uh, and then uh, in terms of going forward in the planning process, HNEI, Hawaii Natural Energy Initiative, is also contributing um, a great deal of resources in kind to the planning process. And then now I'd like to turn it over to uh, Taja Mashida, the president of Oahu Energy Cooperative Molokai, uh, as well as a member of the Clean Energy Group. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Taja Mashida, and uh, Born and raised Molokai for a generation, Matt's brother, basically. Um, I, I, I'm a, a Hokulea Voyager and publisher of the Molokai Dispatch. And, you know, I just want to be really clear about my intentions here today. I, um, I think like all of us, uh, we, we love our island and um, we're very um, concerned for our future and for our future generations. And uh, I'm, I'm here to, to community build and build a better Molokai uh, for, for everybody to appreciate it and enjoy it with each other. So I'm here today just to very quickly um, help uh, kind of lay out the, the landscape of uh, both of these different uh, organizations that you're meeting with today. Um, so we, we heard a little bit about uh, the, the HUI and I just wanted to quickly introduce uh, some of the people here from my team, from the uh, Oahu uh, Energy Cooperative Molokai. And we have uh, Christopher O'Brien, we have uh, Lori Buchanan, Sequoia, and McKenna uh, Fernandez here uh, with us today, as, uh, along with a lot of other people that have been with us along the way. Our group has been meeting now for uh, many years, uh, more than a few years, um, a, kind of as an organic group. And when some of these bigger uh, energy uh, requests for proposals, request, uh, projects for Molokai uh, started to bubble up. We saw this as uh, an opportunity to, to come together um, and create something that can bring equity to Molokai. Um, and by that, I mean uh, help uh, the, the rest of us who don't already have solar, uh, help us get access to that, help us get reduced energy and whatnot. So uh, who is Oahu Energy? First of all, Oahu uh, means to gather or collect. And we were gifted that name um, by my classmate, Kilia Purdy, um, you know, who helped us uh, with this concept of gathering the sun and, and dispersing it for people. Um, you know, so basically um, we decided on a co-op model. Um, that's a model um, that is inclusive, that works from the ground up. Um, and um, we, we thought the co-op model, uh, there are other examples here of Molokai, like Hikiola, um, and it, we thought it was a model that um, really spoke for itself. Um, in terms of uh, all, our, all of these different people you see here, uh, what you really need to know is that we're all volunteers. Uh, we, we, we wear the community hat first, uh, more so than any, anything. And so um, the HUI is here. We're, we're so lucky to have two groups. The HUI is here to help us with a pathway, right? We're looking at what does Molokai look like when its renewable energy is completely built out. Um, and so we are here today as the HUI uh, to help gather consensus and inform and whatnot. Uh, the the co-op is here. It's kind of where the rubber meets the road. Um, we want to take guidance from the HUI and we want to start building out Molokai's energy future. So the, the, the co-op is kind of building uh, the plant. 
Um, we also are, uh, we recently got a, a grant from uh, Maui County and uh, thank you so much to our county. Um, and so another thing that we're tasking ourselves with is basically uh, workforce development so that um, we know that, that solar and renew renewable energy is Molokai's future. And so we wanna make sure that the, all the jobs that come from that, um, that those uh, are gonna be filled by our Molokai people. Um, so that's another thing that we're up to as the co-op. Um, you know, I just want you guys to also know that um, both groups, um, we are open groups. Uh, we, we meet hours and hours, um, you know, um, you know, easily 40 hours of community meetings here from the co-op. And so, uh, number one, we're open. Please join our groups. Please look for us. Uh, we talk story all the time. Energy uh, right now might seem like a lot to take in, um, but it, 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 this is a, it's a fun group. It's a good group. We're doing good things. Um, and the other thing you really need to know about is um, the transparency. So any anytime you guys need to know anything about either group, what we're doing, we are all of and for and by the community. So. Um, call me up. You guys can have my uh, cell phone number, talk story anytime. Any, any one of our groups, uh, we're open for you guys at all times. So I know you guys, we've been talking a long time, talking at you guys for a long time. Um, you know, we want to uh, basically uh, give a space for Q&A. And so uh, I'm going to help that uh, help uh, with that section a little bit. And I, I just wanted to say, you know, another huge congratulations to Leilani uh, for hanging in there and uh, you know, having having uh, Molokai's newest community member uh, here with us today I, it, it's unbelievable. Congratulations. Um, so with that being said, uh, you know, if you guys uh, have any questions, uh, we're here uh, for you wearing the hui hat uh, to help, I guess, kind of formulate a better idea of, of, of what Molokai's energy future looks like and how you guys can get involved. So with that, uh, if you guys got any questions, please, um, please jump in. Hey, Todd, um, this is Scott Glenn. I'm the chief energy officer at the Hawaii State Energy Office. and. Um, while folks are maybe thinking of their questions, I just wanted to chime in and say um, that we're really excited about this effort. And, you know, the Energy Office, we're looking at energy projects across the state, and we're consistently hearing a desire for projects to be more rooted in community and to be more responsive to residents' needs and concerns than maybe what's happened in the past. And that's not every project, but I think consistently we're hearing that folks want more say in what gets built in their communities. And for us at the Energy Office, we, we would like to see more projects be the kinds of projects that people feel proud to have in their communities. And so I just want to say really uh, I'm encouraged by this work you guys are doing and the approach you're taking uh, to really generate this kind of conversation and help inform the decision making and the types of things that do get built and have lasting impacts in the community. So mahalo to all of you for your work. And Leilani, amazing. I'm so impressed that you're even doing this meeting today. <laughs> thank you all. Hey, hey, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today. And, and um, you know, I, I really can't say enough good things about our community here on Molokai and, and what they've achieved during COVID. Um, and, 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 and just to give everyone listening here today a kind of a broader perspective, um, you know, a lot of times these large scale energy projects, the community is put at the end of the process. And oftentimes, um, it, you know, it doesn't, um, it, it, by the time it gets there, it may not necessarily be the best fit. And so I, I do want to put a shout out to um, the state of Hawaii, to the Public Utilities Commission, um, to all of the leaders in energy um, that are, um, you know, putting this vision of getting the public up front uh, in the process to prevent a lot of this noise and this division and whatnot. And so we are really proud to be a part of that, that process. And, and we're hoping that um, th the changes that we make here on Molokai are gonna be broader changes that can be appreciated and, and, and affect our communities elsewhere. Uh, Paul, uh, thanks so much for joining us again today. I see your hand up. 
Uh, thank you for being brave and throwing out our first question. What do you got for us? Uh, I got this in the mail. This is from, uh, it's a virtual stakeholder session. And you know, I, are you familiar with this? And I'm wondering what the strategy is around that and what that's all about. Sure, so um, again, just to give you all a little bit more of a landscape of what's happening here on Molokai, um, we have no large scale renewable energy projects yet here on Molokai. We have a lot of uh, rooftop solar. Um, and so, um, you know, basically um, the first project that we're talking about here is called a community-based renewable energy project. And what that is, is a virtual solar project that allows um, the developer um, to build solar on behalf of people who can't necessarily traditionally install solar. So say you're a renter, uh, you look across the street, um, your neighbor is a homeowner, they've been enjoying solar for the past five, 10 years, um, you feel left out. Um, Community-based renewable energy is allowing us, um, is, a, is, is a project that allows for renters and whatnot to subscribe um, to solar panel energy um, and, and it will help get that energy across. And, and Audrey, I'm going to let you answer the rest of this question because I answered the part of it. Uh, mahalo, Todd. Before I do that, um, Rick Rochelo from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute is here with us. I think he's still here. Rick, are you still here? And he unfortunately has to go early. We were going to introduce him later. But Rick, do you want to just do a really quick introduction? And then Paul, I'll come back to your question. Is that OK? OK, well, I have told the other people I'm going to be a little bit late. So if you want to hold off a little bit, or I can do it now, your choice. Um, it's probably going to be another 15 minutes or so. before. I, I'm good for that long. OK, great. Um, so I'll, 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 hang, I'll hang in for a while longer. And if I get critical, I'll let you know by chat. Thank you. Um, so, Paul, the um, the HECO's meeting on August 11th is intended to, um, and Mahina and Matt can add if they want to, um, they, they invited everybody as required by the PUC to provide input on the community-based renewable energy RFP. Um, what they've told us is that they plan to incorporate the comments that we've already provided, that the Hui and Ho'ahu have already provided. So hopefully we'll hear their response to those requests on the 11th. We've already seen some of them in the, without getting into all the details. The PUC has supported a lot of our requests and HECO has volunteered to um, accommodate some of our requests. So um, the strategy is really for um, interested people to show up on the 11th and support the, um, you know, support the community's priorities on that, um, on that RFP. And if you're interested, um, we probably should put together a, a short version, but we do have a letter from the Hui and another letter from Oahu that kind of lay out the, the specifics that, um, the specific changes that we're asking to be made in that RFP. And, and um, we kind of anticipated this might come up. And so if, if you or if a group of people want to have a separate meeting to kind of do a deep dive on the community-based renewable energy RFP, we're happy to do that. But we just didn't have enough time in this meeting to do that and talk about the plan. Is that clear enough for now, Paul? Thanks. And Audrey, uh, just so yeah. people don't get confused, um, you mentioned Mahina and Matt, Mahina Martins with Miko, and, and the Matt um, Audrey is referring to is Matt McNaff. Matt McNaff, right, right. So Mahina and Matt McNaff have, Mahina Martin and Matt McNaff from HECO, I know, are on this call, and they're the folks who are kind of leading that meeting on the 11th. So um, if, if there's anything they feel um, they'd like to add at this point, Mahina? Or Matt? Hi, Audrey. It's Mahina. Hi. Mahalo and aloha, everybody. Um, yes, Paul. So the postcard you received is our invitation to any and all, um, whether you got the postcard or read about it elsewhere, to come next week. Um, we're going to be sharing information about the community-based renewable energy shared solar program, the request for proposal um, process, and um, we're looking forward to getting some feedback from everyone and our team will be available for questions. 
as well as prepared to answer any early questions we've gotten ahead of the meeting. So please feel free to use the email address um, that you see noted to send us. And we've been working closely with um, the HUI as well to um, explore and examine the questions that they've posed early on. So maybe a last call for any questions about the background that um, Leilani and Matt and Chris and Todd presented. I would like to ask, this is John Word, and I would like to ask if you have some uh, inkling of what the schedule would be of when this project will be implemented and actually put into practice. John, thank you so much for that question. Um, on, on this question, I'm gonna let somebody from the Oahu team uh, and let, let them run with this one. John, can we just clarify, are you asking about the schedule for the community-based renewable renewable energy project. So the CEBR CBR. Okay. Project. Great, great. Thank you. So, so just to clarify, you guys, um, in, in the public, I, I know this is a lot of information, and um, what you need to know is that these renewable energy projects last anywhere from twenty to thirty years, and so this community-based renewable energy project represents about twenty percent of the island's energy needs. So this is one of the first projects that we're getting started on. Um, but just to keep in mind, there's another 80% of Molokai's energy needs um, that we need uh, to continue to build out. Um, so if, if somebody uh, from uh, either Oahu uh, or the Hui would like to answer John's questions in terms of uh, the timing of this first project, uh, that, that would be great. Chris? Oh, I, 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 I was just going to say that the timing of it is, is based on a number of factors. Like the hope is that after the community meeting with Hiko next week, there will be a quick turnaround, um, a, a potential for either further discussion and then a quick turnaround on revisions to the RFP. Um, but once the RFP gets issued by and approved by the PUC, I think the window of time for applying is about two months. And so I think, you know, at, at this, at the rate that we're going now, um, I don't know if the RFP, RFP might get issued by the end of this year. Um, and if that's the case, um, we're looking at a, a project getting, starting to get developed um, in 2022 or further into 2023. So, and that, it also depends on the developer. So I know the co-op is interested in developing the project. So um, it, it, it's, it's a number of different factors. Thanks, Chris. And Todd, Katie just um, brought my attention to a question from Keola Malpono that says, any way to get the action plan? And um, Keola Malpono, the action plan doesn't exist yet. And the, um, just to, um, I know some folks came in a little bit late, but the purpose of this meeting tonight is to get people's mana'o on what we want to include in the plan um, we already have a rough scope, but we want to hear what else is important to you. And our schedule for the creating that action plan is um, scoping between now and the end of the year. So we'll come back to the community with our proposed scope and process. We'll start actually planning in January. And then what our technical experts tell us is it will take somewhere between 12 and 18 months to do all the analyses so that the community can make the decisions we wanna make and have a plan. So we're looking at having the action plan ready for implementation sometime around, you know, at the earliest, the end of 2022 and probably time in first half of 2023. So there is no action plan yet. You and everybody in the community is gonna help make the action plan. So maybe with that, we can move into talking about the action plan and how we're gonna, um, where we're starting. Is that okay? Any last burning questions? Hey, Audrey. Yes. Hi, it's Mahina. Sorry, I just really wanted to be clear about something. Uh, the question about after the Hawaiian Electrics meeting, what happens? Um, just to be clear, we're submitting the revised request for proposal within 20 days um, as requested by the commission. 
and then um, following our August 11th meeting, and then the PUC will go ahead and review and approve. Um, so that's you know a point I wanted to make sure that folks understood. Thank you. Anything else before we switch over and focus on the plan now? Um, just one thing from Life Land, Henry Curtis here. Um, you're, you're right, the PUC will uh, do something, but they may modify or approve. They don't rubber stamp. Thanks for the clarification, Henry. Last call for questions on the CBRE or the HUI or the, I mean, we'll have another chance at questions at the end, so. Um, yeah, and I, I just want to remind you guys, um, th this is just the very beginning. So, you know, um, write your questions down. Um, please join us in future meetings. We're just going to continue along as best we can and answer questions as we go along. So, mahalo. Thanks. So, Leilani, back to you. Perfect. And yeah, I got a couple other direct messages in the okay. chat. I think that this next section will answer everybody's questions on that. So um, I want to talk a little bit about why this plan is so important. And as Matt covered in um, Molokai Renewable Energy's history, much of the progress made on Molokai so far has been initiated by the community. And since 2016, there have been no large scale utility projects. When we look back at past projects what we uh, that did not go forward, we see a pattern of proposals that do not reflect our community's needs preferences and cultural priorities. The RFP process in general does not leave significant space to address our consistently expressed desire to have a say in the decision-making process that affects us, the people who actually live here. So over the years, I've had the privilege to work within thousands of Molokai households to collect data, conduct energy audits, change out essential appliances, light bulbs, and water fixtures with the main purpose of educating my community on how to cut down on energy consumption and reduce our island's collective carbon footprint. I've experienced firsthand the willingness of my community to understand and participate in anything they can that would help bring down the high cost of living here on Molokai. And I hear both the individual and the collective desire to be able to do more in terms of renewable energy so that we can be free to focus on investing and enriching our families. So I understand the urgency and the deep-rooted importance for this community to steer our own path towards a Lahaina based future, responsible sustainability and energy sovereignty. So the Molokai Sea Wrap will take us beyond simply just conserving energy. This is our opportunity to co-design the way we assess and express our energy needs directly with PICO and oh, PICO, PUC and HICO, who are the ones who put out the RFPs and regulate them. So having, having our own tech, neutral technical analysis from h and &E will arm our community with knowledge to make smart decisions and reach our goals of having 100% renewable energy generation. So those are, the main, those are the main reasons why this plan is so important. And um, with that shared goal in mind of reaching 100% renewable energy, I'm gonna turn it over to Audrey to introduce herself and give an overview on how the Molokai Sea Wrap will help us achieve our renewable energy goals. Mahalo Leilani and congratulations again. And I am just completely blown away by how amazing you are. Um, Aloha mai kako, I'm Audrey Newman and I'm on the executive team of the Molokai Clean Energy HUI um, and the Sustainable Molokai Board. I'm also the Molokai representative on HECO's Integrated Grid Planning Stakeholder Council. For those of you who don't know me, I've lived in Kalai for almost 20 years and more than 40 years in Hawaii. Unlike everybody else who's speaking tonight, I'm kind of a newbie to energy issues. Most of my career, all of my career actually, I worked in conservation and sustainability with island communities and leaders um, in Hawaii, across the Pacific and around the world. Um, in that time, I've done a lot of planning. And so I'm gonna give you a quick overview of the Molokai Community Energy Resilience Action Plan or what we're affectionately calling Molokai Sea Wrap. So like the signpost on the left here, there are a lot of technologies and ideas that might work on our island and we need to make some really important choices. The next generation of energy projects will be a big investment 
and will affect many of our other community priorities, things like disaster preparedness and climate change impacts and um, cost of energy. This plan will help the community develop a clear clean energy roadmap for Molokai as far as we can see together. We hope the Molokai CRAP will provide good information and a transparent community process to work with all the stakeholders and plan in an integrated and holistic way instead of doing piecemeal projects. Together, we will identify priority renewable energy projects for Molokai's current and near-term energy needs and lay the foundation for the next 30 to 50 years. So how will we work together? on this plan. Most importantly, our process will be community-led and island-wide. It's really important that we include everyone's needs. It will be independent and technology neutral thanks to the expert technical analysis and guidance from HNEI. We're committed to engaging all stakeholders in a collaborative process so that we can build community agreement. And those important stakeholders include Molokai's utility, of course, Kiko or Miko or whatever you wanna call them, our residents, practitioners, landowners, businesses, community groups, elected officials, government agencies, and anyone else involved in Molokai's energy ecosystem. The plan will help us build the partnerships we need for rapid implementation, and it will be a living plan. Together, we will identify new issues as we go and we'll address them over time. So we hope we'll have a community agreement on the initial priority projects in 12 to 18 months from when we launch in January. And we'll move ahead on those while we're figuring out the new things that come up. So what's included in the Molokai Sea Wrap? We want it to be as comprehensive as possible in a reasonable time frame. In front of you are the objectives we're starting with and others may be added tonight and throughout the planning process. The first four are our top objectives. We wanna to get to 100% renewable energy for electricity as quickly as possible. Taking into consideration community concerns that have been expressed in many meetings over the years. These include a strong our strong preference for rooftop solar, opposition to big wind, and of course, protecting native Hawaiian rights and important cultural and natural resources. The plan will include recommendations for grid improvements, especially to increase reliability and resiliency. To, um, it will reduce energy costs as equitably as we can so that people will, the, with the greatest need will benefit from energy savings too, not just those who can afford to put solar on their roofs. And um, we really want to get started on clean transportation projects to add more electric vehicles and charging stations to Molokai's energy e ecosystem. So those are the top four that we know about. We also want to build community capacity and jobs. We want to develop a dashboard so we can track our progress. We want to understand costs and potential funding sources, especially for big capital improvements. And we're committed to coordinating with all the current planning efforts and programs at the, uh, at the island, county, utility, state, and national levels. And Cheryl will talk about that a little bit more when she shares about community involvement. So this is the HUI's initial scope for the Molokai Sea Wrap, and we really look forward to getting your feedback on, and ideas on how we can make it stronger. So now, it is my, I'm really happy to introduce our partners from the Hawaii Natural Energy Institute. Rick Rochelot is the Institute's director and Mark Glick is the specialist on energy policy. We're grateful that HNEI is partnering with the Hui and the Molokai community to provide technical exp expertise and funding support for the Molokai Sea Wrap. Some of you may remember that Rick and HNEI worked with the Molokai Clean Energy Initiative in 2015 on installing and the initial operation of a grid stabilizing battery at Palaau and later on a dynamic load bank, both of which made it possible to add more rooftop solar to our Molokai grid. Mark, 
first worked on, with Molokai in 2003 to 2010 when he was at OHA. And then he came back as the head of the Hawaii State Energy Office during Big Wind. He's the one who convinced Governor Abercrombie to reverse the state's position on Big Wind on Lanai and Molokai. So together, these two great guys are gonna lead the HNEI team of experts to help us understand and to identify the best options for our Molokai Sea Ramp. We're really happy that Rick stayed <laughs> and Mark is here. Um, they could join us tonight so they could introduce themselves. And after that, Cheryl will talk about the most important part of this meeting and plan community involvement. Rick, thank you so much for waiting. Thank you, Audrey. And I don't know that I have that much to add to what you already said in your introduction. Um, so yes, we were involved with the Molokai community in 2015. It was really enjoyable doing that project over there. Um, I think part of you know, our involvement in, in this new effort or this renewed effort or continued effort is, is a little bit wanting to finish some of the things that we started. You know, we, we put the battery in, we had the dynamic load bank in, but there, there are aspects of that that from a technical and, and research perspective were of interest to us to really push a little bit further. So that helped provide some of the incentive and, and realistically helped me justify some of the financial resources I can, I can bring to bear to, to help out on this. Um, I think my, my one difference with Audrey is she said, we're gonna help identify the best options. I think the objectives of the HUI are really admirable. Unfortunately, a lot of them will maybe compete with each other a little bit. You know, if you want better, more reliability and, and more resilience, it may cost more. If you want to aid grade transportation, it's gonna involve some, some other issues. So I think our role in this is to try to provide not technical expertise to tell you what the solution is, to, but to provide unbiased information about cost and some of the more complicated issues on the grid about reliability, about dynamic stability that may be a little bit more technical, but then try to inform the community so that ultimately the community can decide where they want to go and what trade-offs they want to make while fitting it into the reality of, you know, it is a utility grid and it needs to operate and, and, and have certain functionality for the utility to be able to operate and do what it does. So it very much is an advisory position. We're not trying to identify a specific or maybe a single path forward, but to make sure that the, the advantages and disadvantage of different options are, are transparent and available to the community to decide. Great, thank you so much, Rick. And thanks. Thanks so much. Mark, you want to add to that or just introduce yourself? Sure. Well, I'm, I'm Mark Lick, uh, and I'll be supporting this project uh, and trying to assist uh, Rick and the team and uh, being able to actually sift through all of, be a good listener uh, with the community and uh, try to understand and incorporate uh, all, all that we can. And, and I think Rick's absolutely right. It, it may very well end up uh, be part of our objective to uh, explain those trade-offs. Might not be able to get everything, but uh, at least give some really good explanations about why we arrived at um, some of the analysis. So very much looking forward to this. I know we've always wanted to um, be part of this kind of new planning effort it involves uh, really community driven and working with the utility and, and others to try to incorporate a broad plan. It really reflects what you'd like to do in your own community. Thanks, Mark. Cheryl? Thank you, Audrey, Rick and Mark. Um, um, uh, I'm Cheryl Corbiel for anybody who doesn't um, know me and I'm on the HUI's executive. Uh, and many of you actually um, know me from Iholoho Molokai because you received hundreds of emails from me um, through the, the big wind um, fight. Um, others know me as the instructor at the community college on Molokai. I'm gonna take a few minutes to outline how important it is for you and your ohana to participate in this planning process. Instead of solely relying on, on HECO led planning processes, the community will conduct an independent planning process with HNAI that will include working with all stakeholders, including the utility to produce a community led 
Island-Wide Molokai Community Energy Resilient Action Plan. And as you learned, the community has 12 to 18 months to, to work on and develop the, the plan. So we have a job. Everyone needs to become Akamai about renewable energy to build a highly resilient energy system for the next 30 to 50 years. The community le um, leads the process for collaborative solutions in the community and transparency within the community. So how are we getting the, 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 the word out? We're getting the word out in a series of Molokai dispatch articles, um, uh, also on the Renewable Energy Facebook pay, group page, um, where you can submit ideas, comments. Uh, we're conducting polls um, and frequent meetings uh, in the community on Zoom, um, and hopefully a little bit better, depending on COVID, in person, which would be our desire, but not we're not able to do that now. But we need you and I'm putting that in capitals, to, rela to relay information to your family and friends. The community is in the driver's seat on this project and N NHAI is our GPS to where we're going, but we are the ones that need to be clear on where it is that, that you and your family want to go with renewable energy. So we're dependent on you for that feedback and that input and your thinking. So the kinds of things you need to be thinking about is you will act, uh, assess and prioritize technologies using community criteria, such as the environment, cultural, economic, and cost impacts. You will be identifying desirable and cost-effective sites, configurations, and grid improvements. Early, uh, also identifying early actions to increase, um, as, as Audrey mentioned, to increase electric vehicle use. You also will be designing a Molokai energy uh, dashboard so we can track our renewable energy progress. So that you, we need input in that as well. So we keep track of it, as well as to coordinate other planning initiatives because there's so much happening in the world today, such as the county's planning for climate change, sea level rise, and site-based resilient hubs for disaster recovery. So our plan needs to fit into what county, state, and others are, are doing. Um, we need to also determine, are we going to have decentralized sites and locations? And if we are, where are they going to be? So we all depend on electricity. Molokai's renewable energy plan success is dependent on your participation. It's the community's plan. Help Molokai and your Ohana become the resilient clean energy community we all want to live in. And you get to start right now. And that is with early, with this early draft of the plan, giving your feedback um, and discussion into that plan. So it rests on your shoulders to give us input. And it's a lot. And you might be thinking, I don't know much about renewable energy, but you're going to learn a lot. So thank you very much. And I'm going to turn it over to Audrey. Oh, Audrey, you're muted. Mahalo, Cheryl. And it is a lot, but it's really not quite as scary because really where we are right now is just talking about what do we want this plan to do for us? What are the questions we have? What are the hopes that we have? You know, what are the ideas that we have? That's where we are right now. Um, before we get into some of our specific questions to you. I want to stop again and see if there are any questions on what's been presented so far, anything you want clarified. And um, maybe I'm just looking to see if there are any hands up or is there anything in the chat, Katie? Or should I just move into our questions and yes. If you go ahead, I would just ask if you ask everyone to sign in. Yeah, so Katie has been posting a Google form and we really, really would appreciate it if you just take a minute, click on it. If all you wanna do is put in your name and email, then we can send you, um, you know, the video of this meeting and some follow-up. There's some questions after that that, would, um, that we'd love to hear your answers to. And it's another way that you can provide input to the scope of the plan. So please take a minute click on the Google form and, and sign in. So we know who's here and we know a little bit about um, what your interests are. Okay. 
So I'm just going to share these questions and I'm happy to hear from um, thoughts on any of them. So one of our questions, one of the things are what are the questions and issues that you have that you want to be sure the energy, our energy plan addresses or includes. Another question is what projects, what renewable energy projects or plans do you know about that are happening on Molokai that we should know about so we can um, include that in the planning um, scenarios? Um, who do you think is really important? Well, who should be, not who should, is really important. Who should be involved in this planning process? Who that's not on this call um, should, we reach out to and um, and then lastly, what are your ideas on good ways to get the word out? So I'm happy to hear people's thoughts on any of those questions. Um, I, I have a question for Auntie Lori specifically. Um, okay. You know, I, I, I know she's been doing some work um, reaching out to uh, her constituents at the Department of Hawaiian Homelands. Uh, and as well as other homesteaders. So I, I, I just want to know from Auntie Lori, um, you know, I, I guess, what is it that our homesteaders need in terms of energy? Well, hello, everybody. This is Lori Buchanan. You couldn't ask a bigger question. No, I just, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of homesteaders um, including my own Ohana that is um, currently off the grid and I see that my connection is unstable. Okay, so my connection is unstable, but um, I, I, you know, demographically the island of Molokai has 62% um, of native Hawaiians um, more than any other island um, besides the Ihau. So a lot of that is due to homesteading. Um, I personally know a lot of homesteading that is occurring um, off the grid, and that's. Oh, shucks. I think oh, we might have lost shoot. her. We lost her. Well, well, while Auntie Lori is coming back, we have another question. Let's see, we have a couple of questions here. Um, from Lucy Lampkin, how do we educate ourselves about models anywhere that can help inform us about options? Um, Todd, would you like to take that one? Sure. Could you repeat the question one more time? Oh, sorry. I'm actually met Matt, but I'm happy. Oh, um, go for it. Yeah. Matt, the, um, the question is how do we educate ourselves about models? anywhere that can help inform us about options for Molokai? Uh, I don't know if I have a great answer for that. I mean, there's so much information out there and it, it, it uh, you know, it, you, can, you can find a ton of great info online if you Google renewable energy, um, especially if you, if you um, read up on other islands that have small grids. Um, and how they have transitioned um, over to renewable energy. There's, you know, there's so many different stories and examples around the world at this point in time um, that you can, we can learn a whole lot from looking at other uh, places that are similar in size, um, have similar communities, similar needs, and similar, similar challenges and limitations that, that we do being such an isolated small island grid. Um, otherwise, you know, um, I would, I would also say participate in Ho'ahu's uh, community meetings. Um, you know, make sure you sign up tonight so you can uh, participate and follow uh, future updates from the Hui um, because we will be doing the same thing. We're going to be looking throughout this process at different models, different technologies, different systems that may fit. Molokai well and that may work here um, so you know it's going to be a part of our process as well even though many of us have already done a lot of this research the technology is constantly changing and um, what we're learning from other places is also constantly changing so that, that's the best answer I, I can give. Thanks Matt. I'll add a couple of things. Um, HNEI has um, like worked with remote 
communities, isolated communities in Alaska, and they're plugged into the national and international network. So um, we're not only relying on HNEI, but we we do know that they'll be able to help guide us to, you know, or, or introduce us to models that are um, helpful and relevant. And then um, I want to give Ali and John Miller a chance. Um, they're two of the developers who have partnered with Oahu and um, and John's worked with small islands before and Ali's um, just an amazing resource for us, um, you know, learning about things that are helpful to Molokai. So I want to see if they have anything more to add to this answer, but sorry, one more. The other thing is, um, you know, we're just, we, the folks at the Hui and Oahu are really, you know, coming up a really steep learning curve. And we know the community needs to come up that same steep learning curve and we don't have all the answers. So part of the community meetings that we're gonna hold are gonna be to help us understand our own grid and learn about um, tools, models, examples that, um, that might be relevant. And ultimately HNEI is gonna sort of give us a set of questions and pathways that we can um, evaluate based on what's reasonable here. So that's, um, that's probably a lot. Um, Ali or John, you wanna add anything to this before we go to the next question? Aloha everyone, this is Ali. Um, uh, from Shake Energy Collaborative, a uh, very uh, eager partner of Ho'ahu. Um, I would say we're all learning together. Um, so I love Matt's suggestion of coming to Ho'ahu and the Hui's future meetings. Um, I also uh, like to read online. Um, there are lots of, I'll, I'll try and look for some cool links of places that I like to read online, but sometimes it's just better to talk story together with people. So I think, as Audrey said, we're all learning together and we'll learn through this process. That's all. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ellie. John? Yeah, this is John from uh, Mono Pacific. And um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a lot new to add here. As, uh, as was said earlier, there's so many different resources, um, so many different perspectives. There's not you know one go-to source. Um, we've taken a couple different islands to 80, 100% renewable energy before, but none of those, you can take exactly a carbon copy and do that in Molokai, nor can we do that in, you know, we're working in Tonga and other places, you know, it's all different cultures, all different you know, perspectives and wants and needs. So I, again, I think the most important thing is just, you know, come to these meetings, be involved, um, ask questions. People will always be there to share information. We'll just share what we know. And, and I think through that collective working together, I think we'll find the answers that, that will be the best for your island. And that will be through uh, your guys' engagement and, and your guys' uh, you know, expressing your desires and passions and going from there. But thank you. Thanks, John. Audrey, I'm, I'm gonna add one, one more thing. Uh, and this is to everybody in the community who isn't uh, signed up yet. On Facebook, we have a Molokai uh, Renewable Energy Facebook group. It's not necessarily the Hui's group or Oahu's group. It's just a community space um, where we can explore together different um, options, opportunities, resources, and keep up to date with what, what's happening ar around renewable energy. I also want to speak to the, um, the others on here who have those resources or who may have links that they can share. Please, I would encourage you guys to use that Facebook group to put up uh, posts to articles or, or videos or whatever um, you can share with our community so that that can become kind of a, a, a resource for all of us to to kind of, you know, a central place to to share that information with everyone. Thanks, Matt. That, uh, that's great. Um, Keola Maupono, would you like to ask your, you know, um, unmute yourself and ask your question that's in the chat? It's a great question. Hi. Um... My name is Pono Sagario. Uh, I live in the Kapa'akea homestead community. Uh, my question is what types of uh, financial backing does this who we think of looking into or contacting Ai Oha? Uh, I, only, I ask this question only because I know that renewable energy is important, but I also understand that renewable energy is expensive. So I just, I don't know. It's a really great question. And, um, and so it sounds like you're asking about financing for the implementation, because, 
because we actually we're, we're also um, you know looking at financing for the planning process, and we identified um, our most likely funding sources. And there's also some other foundations we might reach out to. In terms of implementation, um, I, I think you know OHA is a really great idea. Um, now Senator Lynn DeCoit has um, been super supportive of this effort. So you know one place to go is the state legislature. Another place to go is, um, you know, there's going to be some significant funding for infrastructure and clean energy infrastructure coming from the federal government um, under the Biden administration. And we're hoping that, you know, we actually believe this plan will um, be in place right around when that money is starting to hit the ground and look for projects. And so um, we're really hopeful that it'll be a combination of federal, state, County and private funds, and I, OHA is. People, some other people have suggested Kamehameha Schools, so we'll talk to everybody. But we do. We are very optimistic that there will be funding streams for implementation. Uh, I, and I just want to add. Um, uh, hi, this is Christopher from the Hawaii Energy Cooperative. Uh, one of the organizations is the cooperative. Um, and then just in terms of funding for renewable energy projects, Audrey is right, there are a lot of resources, but primarily for us who are trying to go through this process of actually implementing um, and developing a renewable energy project, we've already identified like potential, you know, equity investors, federal grants, federal loans, um, there's the state GEMS fund. So there's a lot of different ways for, for financing to work for a renewable energy project. And so um, we're, as, as the a community developer, a community grassroots developer, we're looking at all of them and we're kind of going to be the testing out the scenario for what works for Molokai. So, and, we, and we've got a, a lot of interest, especially uh, in investing in a, in a potential project, so. Thanks, Chris. Um, Rudy, do you want to ask your question? Unmute and ask your question. And then um, Malia has something she wanted to say after Rudy. After yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I'm, uh, it's very exciting to participate. Uh, I'm uh, uh, a new guest on Molokai. I'm working on the very east end. And I'm not very familiar what the bottleneck is on for renewable energy uh, on Molokai. Is it equity? Is it sites for for um, location sites is it is it the grid uh, is it community support I think that's I'm interested to hear what, what you think about that what the bottleneck is so the question is what is the bottleneck for renewable energy on Molokai I think we can have a long and really interesting discussion about that question. But I, can, I can try to bite, up, bite off the first part if somebody wants Great. to. Great, Todd, right. take it. Take hey. it, Todd. Um, you know, let, let's just say, uh, to keep it short, uh, Molokai is not necessarily an attractive place to do business. It's not, a, it's not an easy place to do business necessarily. And, and there have been um, several other uh, large-scale renewable energy projects that have been planned that have failed or that just basically, you know, ne never got to the point where um, it, it was totally green lighted. So, um, you know, that being said, it's also a, a scale. Um, so these energy projects are big for us, but they're not giant. Um, and so for a developer uh, to get all of their equipment, do all of their business um, and to attempt to interact with this community uh, in a place that is very far and alien, generally, usually from where they're from, it's, you know, it's, it, it makes it a little bit cumbersome. Um, and, and, and so, you know, in a nutshell, we're all of us here on Molokai saying, okay, well, we know our island, we know our people, um, we can bring together um, people together, um, we can help answer the tough questions. Uh, why can't we navigate this process ourselves? And so that's, you know, in a nutshell, what, what we're here for. Thanks, Todd. And I'll, Audrey, I'll, I'll, add, I'll add a little piece to that. Um, Rudy, the other bottleneck, and, and you know, Matt McNeff might be able to jump on and summarize this more accurately but you know there's a lot of uh, limitations with the current grid itself uh, we saw that with uh, rooftop solar installations um, in 2015 if you caught the 
you know, the earlier part of my presentation uh, is when they shut down the NEM program and rooftop solar basically came to a halt on Molokai. And that was because the Molokai grid itself um, hit its capacity in terms of its ability to uh, handle distributed energy. Um, the influx of it during peak generation, which is when the sun is out, you know, middle of the day. Uh, so, you know, all kinds of technical issues, right, with the way the grid's designed, because it was designed around uh, central distribution coming from, you know, diesel, diesel powered turbines. So um, there's, there's that whole element as well uh, that needs to be addressed uh, so that the grid can be up updated, upgraded, and, you know, able to work with renewable energy input. Matt McNath, would you like to add anything to this? Uh, I think you did a good job. I mean, it kind of goes back to scale. You know, there's only there's only so much uh, energy to serve on Molokai. So, uh, and the ability to incorporate a lot of uh, uncontrollable rooftop DG is is somewhat limited by um, how much energy people use. Great, thank you. I'll I'll add one more thing, which is um, you know our our sincere hope is that after we get through this plan, we'll have um, like a portfolio of projects, more than just one um, or maybe one huge one, but we'll, we'll have a clear idea of how we would like to see the remaining renewable energy for our island, which is about 75% of our total need, possibly more. And, um, and that might be more attractive to, um, developers and funders and things like that. So um, the certainty that the community is in agreement and the fact that the project, the, the total project will be bigger and more inclusive could change, you know, those bottlenecks. So um, hopefully this plan is part of the solution to the things that have kept us up for a little while. Um, Thank you, everyone. These are all great questions. Are there any other? I, I'm not, Malia said she wanted to share after everyone is, um, I guess after we're doing the questions or Malia, do you wanna talk now? Or do you wanna wait till the very end? Uh, well, I, I can talk now since the agenda is about Mana'o, you know, on the yes. CCAP. Um, so one, I'm really grateful that we, you know, we've gotten this far and I really support the, you know, the cooperative model. And it's great to have the two Yamashitas here because really their father had that vision, you know, and we had Molokai Electric and I think the powers that be didn't want our, our island to succeed. So I think it's really important that we emphasize that we, we do this kind of co-op model where it's really community based. Um, and really insist on that. And I'm really happy that we're looking at, you know, 30 to 50 years from now, you know, as I look at the impact of our kupuna who, you know, started the Molokai community plan and the Eastern policy statement, a lot of them have passed, but we, their, their words live on, you know, and it's guided us and got us to this point. So, I think the work that we're supposed to be doing is like super important and it will yield, you know, benefits to generations not yet born. Um, you know, and I'm also part of the climate change action plan. And so I, I think it'll be, I'm glad, you know, you guys are saying we need to look at these other ongoing planning efforts and make sure we're all in sync. You know, so, so just, you know, I think it was yesterday we had a meeting on that and, you know, we have a contractor that is going to be doing all these like sea level maps. So I think it's important in terms of siting, determining where our population is going to have to be relocated. And that'll, that'll help us to determine the siting for these renewable energy projects. Um, I also feel you know, someone's talked about, do we centralize or decentralize? 
I think just because of the topography of our island and that some areas may be under water and cut off from other parts of the island that we might want to look at different moku, different uh, districts. And I, and I think in terms of climate change, you're going to see extreme weather events. So, you know, we got to think of disaster preparedness and do these renewable, can these renewable energy projects withstand really uh, terrible extreme weather events? And if certain communities within Molokai get cut off from each other, can we provide for our different moku so no one is um, with left without? Um, the other thing too is, you know, as I'm looking at just in the news, like what what's been happening this last month, whether it's flooding, it's drought and crop failures and the current electricity grid being affected by these extreme heat levels. I think we need to be thinking of like, how do we ensure that the grid overall is protected by these kinds of extremities. And then when we look at the dashboard thing, I think part of that dashboard is to determine what is our, um, carbon footprint and that we seek to be carbon neutral. And when we look at financing continual improvements to our renewable energy grid, that we look at different um, streams of income, you know, or, or revenue. And I think if we could somehow get into the carbon market and use like reforestation and things like that, because if we reforest and we create a better, you know, more sustainable environment that will also strengthen our grid. Um, I think too, it's important to look holistically. Um, so I'm glad like transportation was included in this, but also I think um, housing and green building and how do we create like LEED certified kinds of buildings and, and begin to kind of think ahead, like what is that gonna look like? 20, 30 years from now. And I have a feeling that we really got to look at purchasing Molokai Ranch, especially places in Mana'e and in Kaunokakai are going to be underwater. So we may have to move a lot of our residents to areas where that is now Molokai Ranch lands. Also, you know, Auntie Laurie, she talked about Hawaiian homestead. There's a lot of guys dying on the list because there's all these infrastructural requirements. So if we can look at areas to get more people on the land, on homestead land, and in other areas that are high enough for sea level rising is it gonna hit us, um, the stronger we'll be. So to me, looking at things holistically, whether it's green building, whether it's housing, whether it's reforestation, um, disaster preparedness. Um, and finally, so I always look at food, shelter, water, right? So water, we got to make sure that our renewable energy is running those water pumps. Because if we, our electricity gets, I mean, our water, electricity gets knocked out, we got to make sure we have water security um, so that our people, you know, are okay. And then looking also at shipping because, you know, we got that giant gas tank down um, at Kaunokakai Wharf, you know, and then we got all our gas stations at, at sea level, you know, so we got to look at the transport of goods between islands and making sure that we increase our capacity so that we don't have to rely so much on these things. So those are kind of like my kind of big picture um, mamao. Mahalo, Malia. Super helpful. And, and you're absolutely right. Um, you know, all of those things need to be on our radar. And some of them, some of them just in our early conversations with HNEI, some of them are going to be doable in that 
12 to 18 months, and some of them are parts of bigger conversations like the shipping question. So we're, we're in for the long haul and we'll um, identify what we can, you know, um, get, get a clear community agreement on and what we need to do more work because it's not Molokai alone or whatever. So thank you so much for scoping that so well for us. That was really helpful. Um, we're committed, uh, you know, we're committed to stay as long as other people want to stay and talk, but for the folks who want to jump off at seven or close to seven, because I think that's where we are right now, we have a couple of just quick announcements. Um, first, Katie wants me to remind you to please go into the chat and click on the Google form and sign in so that we can connect with you and fill out the, the questionnaire if you can, because we're really interested. It's also another way to provide um, uh, suggestions to us if you're a little shy about, um, you know, jumping onto Zoom. Um, Katie also wanted to make an announcement because we have a new position at Sustainable Molokai to support this planning process and the climate change planning process that um, we've mentioned really quickly. So Katie, would you like to talk about that? Thanks, Audrey. Aloha, everybody. Um, I'm Katie Mokuwao. I am part of Sustainable Molokai, and I'm actually the project manager for the climate change plan that we are going to be working on for Molokai, um, which is a county-funded renewable, and it, it's a renewable um, sea level rise plan that we're going to address for the entire island. It's the first in the entire county. Um, so it's another precedent that we're setting and Leilani and I are very working, working very, very closely um, for our community engagement and stakeholder pieces. So in terms of energy and sustainability, we are looking at Sustainable Molokai for an assistant to help in both of these processes. Um, I'm gonna put the information in the chat, but it's basically on our website, sustainablemolokai.org. It is called Energy and Sustainability, sustainability Assistant or Sustainability Assistant. And um, it's really gonna help in all of this community outreach, all these meetings and really getting everyone involved in both processes and both plans. Um, so please go to the website, check it out let us know. We'll also put our emails in the chat. Um, if anyone you know, or if you can cite anyone that might be interested, we're really looking for people who are vested in our Molokai community. Um, I think that's all. Mahalo. Let me know if you have any questions. Mahalo, Katie. Um, it's a, this is going to be a really exciting opportunity for someone who really wants to help make things happen for the Molokai community. If you give us your email, we'll actually send you the um, job description so you can share it with others. Um, okay, so let's see. Um, and the link is in the chat. I think we're um, close to the end. Leilani, did you wanna do the, um, the schedule and then turn it over to Matt? Are you still? Yep, I can do the, okay. yep, I'm still here. Okay, so this is our outline of our timeline for the multi C wrap. Uh, we're currently in the pre planning stages, which is why it's important that we get a head start on our community engagement, um, such as this meeting today. Uh, we're going to use that feedback to guide the entire process from start to finish. So even though we plan to launch in January of 2022, we will have this meeting and another meeting in either October or November to continue to get that community feedback and um, share it with you guys. And once we start in January, it'll take about 12 to 18 months to complete. Thank you. And Matt? Okay, uh, so outreach and next steps. We talked a little bit about this earlier, but to, to me, and I think for most of us, this is mo one of the most important um, things that we need to focus on, which is really engaging our community and getting information out there 
making sure people know what's going on and what the opportunities are in terms of how to participate. So um, there's a few different ways to do that. We already talked about um, the Facebook group page, Molokai Renewable Energy. The link is there. You can just search for it and it should pop up. Um, again, that will be kind of a holding space and a, a community space to, to access resources and, and have conversations with each other. Um, we also will be putting up some short polls on the Facebook group. Uh, please participate in those and share them and encourage others in the community to share them because um, the answers we get from those polls kind of really inform us in terms of what is uh, at the top of the mind, uh, top of the minds for our community members, you know, what, what the different uh, hopes and desires and concerns may be. Um, so it's a real effective way to access um, our broader community, um, not expecting everybody to show up to these sort of meetings, right? Um, and then as far as uh, this meeting today goes, we will be posting the video uh, for people to, to watch. That'll go up on the Facebook page, should be up on YouTube. Um, so really we're saying, please help us to spread the word. Uh, I see a lot of new names in the attendance um, on this Zoom. So that's a really hopeful, exciting thing for us. Uh, we hope that that continues to grow. So really want to mahalo our community for showing up um, and hope, hope you guys got a lot of good information out of this and, and really asking all of you to spread the word, um, encourage people to show up for future um, meetings and, um, and, and share that information and have the conversations and, and jump in in the comments on the Facebook group. And you know it's, it's really about sharing information to figure out where we want to end up. Um, also want to, uh, again, repeat that Miko does have uh, the CBRE meeting coming up on August 11th at 6 p.m. We'll put more information about that in Facebook as well. Um, it's another opportunity to participate, learn, and, and have your voice heard around renewable energy. So uh, please show up for that. Um, and I think this is, uh, I'm going to officially wrap it up, but we'll kind of stay on a little longer if there are any additional questions or comments that anybody wants to share. Um, so, you know, on behalf of the Molokai Clean Energy Hui and all of the presenters, as well as all of our uh, supporters, partners, um, and the other stakeholders on island who have been participating in this so far, we want to thank you all for uh, showing up tonight. We know it's been a lot of information, a lot of good information, a lot of good conversation. Um, uh, and, you know, it's been said a few times here, but when you boil this down, this is really about the future of our islands, really about better life for our, our future generations, this is really about getting Molokai to where it needs to be in terms of being sustainable, resilient, and, um, and a place that our, our community members can continue to, to live and thrive. Um, so again, mahalo to all of you for coming, and I think that is the official uh, closing of our meeting. I do, I do have one announcement before we, before you close, <laughs> yep. which is um, for, for people who are interested, um, we are having our, the co-op is having its next uh, community meeting on August 21st. And it's normally between about nine and 11. So if you watch out on the Facebook page, the Molokai Renewable Energy, you'll hear the announcement for that next meeting. Um, I also dropped the link to our website um, if you wanna learn more, thank you. Thanks, Chris. Mahalo, everybody, so much for a really great discussion, great input. We will take it all on board and we will be in touch to um, keep you involved. And thank you so much for being the first, being part of this first meeting um, because, uh, you know, it just shows how interested you are about energy and you can help us, everyone else, um, get involved. So really, really, really appreciate everybody joining us tonight. And sign up, fill out the Google form if you haven't done that yet. Katie keeps reminding me. Just so we have a way to, you know, um, be in, stay in touch with you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mahui ho.
Hi, I'm sorry. Um, one one thing that I wanted to uh, say, but I forgot until now, was the one of the conversations that I have with my family about renewable energy is the commitment of the partners that you plan on having uh, conversations with about the renewable energy, because uh, my mom in particular would uh, go to meetings in the past. I think it was the early 2000s before I was born. Um, and one of the concerns that she raised was the commitment of the companies that would build the the batteries and the and would help the grids and she will she raised the question of what happens when the batteries are built and the comp and how long are the companies going to stay on the island to help maintain and repair and help guide uh, the Molokai people. So I think that's just one of the many conversations that um, the Hui could have with your your guys's partners is how how committed are the companies gonna be so, so that when we do run it when it's inevitable that we do run into issues um, that we're not left in the dust and the companies don't make just don't make profit off the island and they're actually there to help uh sorry that that's just something i wanted to add yeah Paul, that, that's, that's that's awesome and it, you know i just like let you know that you know in this scenario it's totally different because it's kind of like the community is the company you, you know what i mean and and so a lot of what we're doing is the due diligence you know what i mean at the end of the day 20 years from now if there's a heap up on a hill or something catch fire, that's got my name on it. You know what I mean? And so um, we're surrounding ourselves with energy professionals, um, people who are frank with us about what the dangers are, what the shortcomings are. Um, we're, we're, we're doing deep dives literally into all the different battery technologies, the different companies, what country they come from, and not just what country they come from, but what region and what country. Does this region have, um, you know, labor issues, whatnot? Um, and, and so, you know, we're really doubling down everywhere that we can to, to be responsible. Uh, and, and, and that's not to say that, no worry about, we get them. Um, we need that kind of scrutiny. We need to hear from our people here telling us, bro, we need this to be safe and we need this to be clean and, and right for our aina. So mahalo. And, and I, I just want to add on to what Todd is saying, just, just to make make clear the distinction between what the HUI is doing, what the co-op is doing. The HUI itself is not um, developing projects or working directly with developers or companies. They might, in part of the planning process, they might hear from potential um, developers on different technologies, but their role is not doing that direct interface on helping to develop projects. They're coming up with, the, they're helping to come up with a plan. On the co-op side, which is what Todd is a part of, I'm a part of and others, is we're trying to be that implementation arm. And so we're, we're, we're directly trying to address a lot of the issues that you raised. Like for example, in terms of you know, decommissioning and the safety of the equipment, like we made that one of our key priority items in speaking with potential developer partners in terms of having a direct plan and a funding plan and building that into the budget for a project so that you know, we address some of those um, safety issues as well as environmental issues. So at the end of the life cycle of these projects, there is a plan for um, safely and um, removing them in an environmentally friendly way where it's not um, leading to toxic things happening in the environment here in Molokai. Mahalo Pono, that's such a, such a great question, really important and, and not necessarily something that people always think about. So thanks for raising it. Was there anything yeah. on your mind? Yeah. Oh no, I'm going to jump in. I'm going to add a little bit more perspective because this is something I think a lot of people in our community forget to think about and, and to consider. So when we're talking about a renewable energy developer coming in, we're basically saying they're going to produce the fuel they're going to from the sun, probably, um, that turns into the electricity that Miko distributes and that we use, right? But what I always try to remind people is think about where that fuel is coming from right now. And who, who, who are those companies? And do we ever get to talk to them? And what, what um, responsibilities do they have to clean up their infrastructure? Because right now, the fuel is oil, 
and it comes in by barge and it gets stored in tanks on the on the on the on the wharf and at the end of the wharf in Kanokakai and it gets transported up to the the Miko power plant. You know the the current form of fuel that we're dependent on on this island is, is really ugly and it's it's really dangerous. I would say far more dangerous than you know mo most of the technologies that we hope will replace it. So I, I'm just bringing that up because I think a lot of times we forget to consider the fact that the electricity we're using right now comes from a fuel and, and we got to look at what that is as well um, when we think about you know the things you said, make sure that we get better partners to come in to provide us cleaner fuel. Uh, and then I, I also want to add about about um, partners, which is that one of, one of the things about developing this co-op for uh, in the community and, and from the community is that we're not leaving. You know, we're here because we want to see the project get done. And the co-op is right now run basically by all volunteers. Um, and so in, in our estimation, we have a vested interest in making sure that a project proceeds, regardless of who the outside experts that we work with or we choose to hire as part of that process. So if we were if we were to unfortunately lose one of our current partners, that wouldn't affect our goal. The, the, the next step would be to find um, another developer who would be willing to work with us on implementing the project. And I think that's also a little bit different from the prior renewable energy projects that were attempted on Molokai. There were always external developers coming into Molokai and saying, this is what we're gonna do. Um, and this, and that's how we're trying to flip the script. Mahalo again, Pono. Great question, as you can see. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and I just wanted to let you guys know that we appreciate everything that you guys do, all the information that you guys make readily available for us, uh, and you guys' commitment to renewable energy on Molokai. Um, I will just tell you right now, I'm not an expert. I'm not. I'm not somebody that's very knowledgeable about this stuff, but I will hope to learn and to better understand the things that are happening in our community and hopefully what I can do as a listener to hopefully um, better, better our lahui. So thank you guys and aloha. Mahalo. Aloha. Anpono, mahalo, bro. Anyone else who's still on? Any any questions or just comments or talk story? I just wanted to say good job, everybody. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Lucy, I see your beautiful face. Did you want to talk to us? No, I'm too shy to talk. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Really quite a wonderful meeting, most informative and a great beginning for me to understand more and more about the process. Thank you so much for making it happen. Mahalo. Thanks for the feedback. It's nice when you were when we all work so hard on this meeting, it's nice to know that someone who is brand new to it found it helpful. So thanks for letting Thank us. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to be my facilitator self and I'm going to call on people. Colton, you're still here with us. What do you think? What have you got, you know, what have you got to say to this, you know, grassroots group who's, um, wanting to create a plan that hopefully will help your integrated Grid plan. So good morning. <clears throat> good morning. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's <laughs> and it looks like morning in my my little corner of my, my home. Um, <clears throat> I, I, I really am impressed by the level of engagement, both by all of you who have your videos on and have a speaking role tonight, um, but also for all of you who were both shy and not shy and asked questions really good questions um, tonight, uh, even though many of them may not have answers yet. Uh, I think the insightfulness comes uh, from the questions that are being asked. So I really appreciate uh, all of that. Um, I encourage folks to continue to participate uh, 
in these meetings, but also to participate in the upcoming CBRE meetings as well. Think of them as complementary uh, and not in conflict. We're trying to create as much uh, opportunities to both inform and get inputs into our CBRE effort that's underway. Um, and I think all of that, uh, hopefully, and I, I really think it will be, uh, that meeting's discussion and the quality of the discussion that we'll have uh, on, I think it's the 11th, will benefit from the discussion that you folks had tonight, right? And, the, and, and you all hosting this event tonight. Um, so thank you all for, for doing this. Uh, thank, you, thank you for letting someone from Baldwin High School speak um, and participate tonight. Um, really, really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, Colton. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate that because we know that um, all of this is connected to the work that you're doing. So really appreciate you being here to, um, to start it with us. Meantime, morning Dean. or evening. Yes. Dean, congratulations. You're a new grandfather. Anything you want to say? Hi, Audrey. Yeah, Hi, I'm Dean. excited. More, the best part about today is getting a new granddaughter. That's so amazing. <laughs> Truly amazing. Yeah. Another awesome meeting. You guys are all awesome, doing an awesome job. It's incredible to see Molokai's power coming together to help Molokai people and, and Molokai Aina. Wow. Thank you. Mahalo. And you have the most amazing daughter. I, you know, the most amazing woman is your daughter. She's just extraordinary. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little biased. Hey, yeah, well, I'm not biased, but I am now. <laughs> I would do anything for her. <laughs> James, is that James Espanola? Do you have anything you want to say? Or if it's another James, you can share. Yeah, just, just listening in to this conversation. Good, good info. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. I know you're up in the mountain. So yeah. Really, really appreciate that. Okay, Don and Artie. <laughs> well, you know what? I think we're in a survival mode we're faced with huge temperatures like 130 degrees on, uh, on the mainland. We've seen a film called Chasing Ice in which we see the glaciers are receding at a very rapid rate, which means that there is sea level rising. All of this uh, indicates that we're already at the tipping point and we've wasted 50 years trying to get to this stage and we can't delay any longer. We have to move forward as rapidly as possible. Amen. And then it looks like the last person who's with us is a phone um, 494-9132. Would you like to say anything to us before we say aloha? <laughs> Secret person, low battery. Aloha. Can you hear me? Aloha. Yeah. Hi, it's Sakaya. It was an amazing oh, meeting. Sakaya. I uh, just had to, yeah. I had to call in by my phone. I was online earlier, and if Pono is still on, I also want to add about the whole thing of the project with Oahu is that uh, we're putting together a workforce training program. So the maintenance of any of the projects that we're going to be implemented are going to be island residents. So yeah, we're gonna bring in outside expertise in designing the projects and, and overseeing the building of it. And then it truly becomes community from there on. So thanks again, Audrey, Leilani, the whole team, Matt, Todd, Lori. Chris, everybody for, and I hope I didn't leave anybody out. This was absolutely awesome. Oh, thank you. Mahalo Sequoia, you were a treat at the end. 
Thanks so much. So um, we were going to do a quick debrief the team. Um, you know, um, so if there's nothing else that we want to talk about as a whole group, um, maybe the folks can excuse us and we'll do our quick debrief and people get back to their family. Thank you so much. Goodbye now. Mahalo, Lucy. Mahalo, Dean. Aloha. Aloha, everybody. Thank you for coming. Aloha. Leilani, you can end the recording. <laughs>